Guys, if you've liked my content that I posted so far, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the little bell right next to it. That will ensure that should I drop more knowledge bombs on you, you'll get the notification so you can watch the video. And again, guys, I want to thank you for your support. What helps me out are those subscribes and those likes and those comments especially. Disagree with me, agree with me, talk about your own experiences. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're kind of becoming more of a kind of military, law enforcement, airsoft, anime, slash mom's basement kind of community. So I really like what I'm seeing and I want to thank you guys for your support. So I've been seeing a lot of questions being asked about tactical slash duty slash military use holsters, not concealed carry, and I've been seeing a lot of really retarded answers. So I thought we'd take a moment and we'd talk about holsters so we can go ahead and dispel a lot of the myths and maybe make ourselves look a little bit like professional gunfighters or professional Japanese pillow rescuers, whatever you, your kind of deal is. So what we're gonna go ahead and talk about is one, materials of the holster we're going to talk about it. two how to wear the holster and different options that you have and then three different types of holsters and different types of retention that are available to you so first things first uh, let's talk about materials i'm not going to get too deep into this and the reason for that is i know for my law enforcement guys um, sometimes you just don't have an option you're going to wear that basket weave holster because it looks freaking good with your uniform and as we know looking good slash looking cool is a big part of the job slash rule number one um, but I will say this if you have some type of weapon that does not have a manual safety and employs a trigger type safety so let's say for example Glock safe action and so the safety is on the trigger itself, then I would highly recommend not using a all leather holster with like no kydex on the inside or anything like that. And the reason for that is as good as leather is and as well as it works over a long period of time as you treat it well, leather does have a bad habit of forming um, in weird ways when it gets wet. And should a lip on that leather get wet and it misforms in an inopportune fashion, such as to point into the trigger guard so that when you reholster the weapon, the leather catches on the trigger and discharges that weapon, that's gonna be a bad day. And there are cases of, the ha of that happening. So as long as you buy a holster from a reputable company, which we'll talk about a couple, then the materials that that company uses will be used in such a fashion that that holster will be reliable and will last you a long period of time. So don't worry too much about it. So we've gotten that out of the way. Let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about how to wear your holster. So if you've watched um, any amount of The Walking Dead or if you've, say, gone to a military base, you've probably seen somebody with a holster all the way down their thigh, say, close to their knees, because these individuals believe that they're accomplishing rule number one, which is looking cool. But unbeknownst to them, they don't look cool and they don't look like professional gunfighters. And I'm gonna to explain to you why. When you have a holster that far down your leg, no matter what you do, that holster is gonna move. So to get it to be somewhat stable, you need to tighten those straps down to the point where it's gonna almost cut off circulation to your leg slash your penis, depending on how long it is. And that's a no-go. Um, and even then, when you move or run, it's still gonna shift around, and then you're A, not gonna be able to find the holster when you need to actually draw your weapon, or two, it's just gonna be annoying as you run and it flops around. Now, I'm sure it works sending a guard at a gate, but if you do any type of actual movement, it's not going to be um, good. Another problem with the really low thigh holsters is that to draw from them, you need to cant your body to the side. Now, the reason that's a problem is I'm a big subscriber to my father, Tra um, to Travis Haley's uh, methodology. And his, a big part of what he does is efficiency of movement. So part of that is if we're having to lean our body all the way over to be able to pull that pistol out and draw it, then we're wasting a lot of movement and we're also adding time. And if you're drawing your pistol, things have gone really sideways. Um, if you're even if you're law enforcement, things are going bad. So you wanna be able to get to that and milliseconds matter. So the less of wasted movement we can have, the better probability that we're going to be alive. So it's important that you have good efficiency of movement. 
So that's why I'm not a big fan of holsters that are all the way down, two straps close to the kneecap. It's just not a good idea. Let's go on the opposite end of the spectrum, all the way to belt slide mounted holsters. So those are holsters that are mounted directly to the belt and in line with the belt. So let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of that type of holster is that it's going to be really close to your body. That's good should you be in a situation where you don't want anything too far away from your body, whether you're working vehicle ops or some type of scenario or environment where it could possibly, possibly be a problem. Now, a couple things to note with that. One, if you have any type of plate carrier or gear over that, that could possibly impede the draw of that belt slide mounted holster and that could be a problem. Um, there are holsters out there and devices that allow that to stand off a little bit. But then again, we're gonna kind of talk about that in a little bit, but uh, if you have a holster that's gonna be away from your body, I think there are better ways to mount it. But anyhow, so if you want it close to your body, you can do the belt slide mount. But again, if you have any type of equipment or heck, even a t-shirt, even a t-shirt that folds over, it's gonna to begin to impede your draw of that. And, and then some of you are gonna be like, well, it's good for concealed carry, and we're not gonna get into concealed carry holsters in this video, but you do have a good point, and we'll talk about it later. And so another thing with the belt slide mounted holsters is that the butt of the weapon is a little bit higher on your body. Now, because of that, when you need to draw it, you're not, most people aren't able to just get it up and pull it out. What they have to do is they have to kind of lean their body over to give themselves a little bit more space as they draw that weapon and pull it out. Now, I've seen people who are really quick at drawing their weapon like that, but again, it's gonna be a little bit of wasted movement. So again, milliseconds matter. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of that belt slide mount mounted holster unless you absolutely need it for whatever reason, depending on your situation. So let's go in between those two. So we have the all the way down thigh holster and we have the belt slide mounted holster. So in between, in between there, we have what's called the mid-ride holster. To me, the mid-ride holster is the best of both worlds. So you have a holster that is low enough to clear any type of equipment that you have, whether that be plate carrier or what have you. The other thing is, is it's a little bit off from the body. What that does is that makes the draw a little bit faster and a little bit easier. Now, the problem you can run into with the mid-ride holster is that um, because it is a little bit lower, there can be a little bit of instability. Now, what a lot of people are tending to do is they put some type of strap, a single strap that wraps around the bottom of the holster around the leg to help stabilize it. And that is definitely acceptable. And that's as many leg straps as you ever want coming off of your holster. It kind of has a Han Solo vibe, so it's gonna be okay. Um, totally good with that. So again, to recap, um, thigh holster, the 80s called, they want their holster back. Belt slide mounted holster, if you want it close to your body. And then mid ride, if you want to look like a professional gunfighter slash you have the ability to do that, I'm a big fan of the mid ride. Or curveball, you are sitting down all day because to be honest, the mid-ride is not the most comfortable holster to sit in a car with all day. And that's where that belt slide mounted holster becomes a bit of an advantage. So for my law enforcement officers, totally okay with you guys rocking that belt slide. Just practice with it a lot to ensure that you're quick and speedy on your draw. Those are some of the different options that we have out there when it comes to our tactical slash duty holsters and different ways that we can wear them. So now that we've talked about that, let's go ahead and let's launch into the different types of holsters that we have. So to start off with, let's go back in time about 16 years and we have Spectre gear and their universal holster. So good holster. Um, it was very efficient for the time and it works. Now there, there are a couple problems with them. So what's good, um, easily adjustable. You can have it all the way down your thigh and look like you're from an 80s action movie or you can modify a little bit and have that cinched all the way up so you can have it like a mid-ride. Um, what's also good is it fits a variety of different weapons, so it's not so hard to choose which holster you need. Now, what is kind of cool about it is it does use a hood retention system right here. Now, in this case, it's secured by a button. So when you go to draw your weapon, to disengage that button as you draw, your thumb is naturally gonna fall between it and break that snap. Once that snap is broken, the pistol can be drawn. Now, the problem that comes into play is when we have to reholster our weapon. So to reholster, we simply reinsert and we have to rebutton. Now, rebuttoning is a problem in this holster, so reholstering is a bit of an issue. Now, why does that matter? Time can a lot of times uh, be the difference between life and death. So um, 
getting that holster back down, getting your weapon back up, reloading, that type of thing, that might slow you down, so it could possibly possibly be a problem. But anyhow, these types of holsters uh, worked, but I think there are, that there are much, much better options for just a teeny bit more money that will work a lot better um, for tactical slash duty situations. So let's go ahead and move over into some of our more modern holsters. Now with these holsters, you might be interested in talking about Safari Land retention levels. And we're not going to get into that just because um, a lot of companies get their retention levels wrong when relating to Safari Land designs and that type of thing. So what we're going to um, relate this to is just the various types of retention that a certain holster has. And we're not going to talk about Safari Land retention levels. But with that in mind, let's go ahead and talk about our first type of holsters, which are our Kydex holsters. So what's good about a Kydex holster is it is simple. It's robust, they're usually quite strong, and they use little screws typically to put more tension on the weapon to keep it into place. So as far as a duty holster is concerned, maybe not the best option, because if I have this on my body and somebody were to reach and to go for my gun, there's very little to prevent them from being able to get their hands on that. There's no device or locking mechanism that prevents them from drawing my weapon. Now, it is a very fast draw, so of course there's a little bit of a take and give, but there are modern systems out there that allow for very fast, draw, fast draws, but still have some type of locking mechanism. So I am a fan of just straight Kydex holsters, and in this case I'm holding the uh, T-Rex Arms Ragnarok, so I think it's a very good design. There are a couple other good companies that make good outside the waistband holsters that are made from Kydex. We have Bravo Concealment, Raven Concealment, um, I know there's about a million more out there and you're probably going to want me to mention your favorite company out there and I just don't have the time to, but rest be assured that there are many good Kydex uh, holster manufacturers out there. But I would not recommend a straight Kydex holster for duty. Um, that being said, I do use these quite a bit. Now, I would be remiss to say that T-Rex Arms does offer another holster called the Titan which has a Safari Land self-locking system on it. And that is a holster that I consider for duty. And that is a holster that I have seen out in the wild. Another quick note with this holster is if you notice on the back, it's like a giant little buckle right here. What that does is it fits to a Safari Land QLS system so that I can easily swap out holsters as needed on my system. Now, how often am I gonna be swapping out holsters? I don't know, probably not that often, but it is an interesting and a cool little design that allows me to swap things out on the fly. And what I typically use it for is if I'm going some type of vehicle mount or something like that, I can easily pull my holster off my leg and that type of thing. That way it's not bothering me when I'm trying to sit down. So cool system, just another option that you have out there. So we have our Kydex types hol type holsters. One other thing to note guys, if you have a weapon that has some type of thought detector on it, it's going to be important that you make sure that when you select a holster, it is made to fit that specific light. Now, sometimes there is a little bit of universality between holsters and light fitment, but just make sure that it's compatible with your light. Otherwise, you could have possibly have issues there. Now we're gonna be moving into a couple different holsters that are very popular and have been used to kill quite a few people. So they've been proven over time. First one we'll talk about is one of the classics. We have the Safari Land with the self-locking system. So what is the self-locking system? Well, it's a simple hood. And how it works is that when your weapon is in the holster and you flip that hood up, it prevents the weapon from being drawn because that hood impedes its ability to be withdrawn from the holster. To release your weapon, you simply, as you draw, you put your thumb down and as your thumb comes down, it's gonna depress onto that hood, and then you simply rotate your thumb forward and it will unlock that hood and you can draw your weapon. Now, another thing these Safari Land holsters have is they can be tensioned with a little screw to increase tension on the weapon. In this case, this particular Safari Land holster has a little bit of tactical fuzz on the inside. So what that tactical fuzz does is if somebody is somehow able to reach into my holster, disengage the SLS lock and try to draw it, the fuzz with the way it is aligned is going to make it really hard to pull that weapon out forward and away from me. So it's just another system that we have to ensure that this weapon will not be taken from me. Now, if somebody manages to pull this down and draw the weapon on me, I'm, I'm having a pretty bad day. But this is a very fast system. You just need to make sure that you're doing reps on it. Otherwise, you're not going to ever get very good with it. and You're going to fumble with it when you most need it. So practice with your holsters.
One thing to note with the SLS system is when you need to reholster, practice on flipping that hood back up into place. A lot of people have a tendency to put the weapon back in and forget about it. That hood is there for a reason. You have that retention there for a reason to ensure that your weapon cannot be taken from you. Ensure that you use it. So that is the self-locking system and it's a really good system. It's very robust. Another really good system is from G-Code and this one is called the XST. Now the XST is a very similar system. It has a hood. However, this hood is power assisted. That means when I come down and hit that little lever right there, instead of having to rotate it forward, when I press down onto it, it will simply unlock and I can then draw the weapon. Very nifty. When I reholster, just like the SLS, I need to lock it back up into place. But again, when I need that weapon, I simply press onto that lever, that hood will retract and I can draw my weapon out smoothly. It's a very slick system, and it's one I've seen in use by a lot of different guys who kill people. Uh, because of that, I would definitely recommend it to some extent or another, depending on what you need. Now, if you're going between the SLS and the G-Code, uh, be aware with the G-Code. Um, some people can outpace that locking mechanism. They draw before they're able to fully depress it. So ensure that you do a lot of reps to ensure that you're properly, properly allowing that hood to depress. And I've seen guys do sub-second draw and shot with these things. So it is a very effective holster. And just like other holsters, it has a tensioning screw to put more tension onto the weapon. So it works very well. And that is the G-Code XST. All right, now that we've talked about the hood type safety systems and retention systems, we're gonna talk about a really interesting system from Safari Land called the Safari Land ALS system. So how the ALS system works is there is a simple little tab in here and that tab will lock onto the ejection port of the weapon so that when I insert it, it will lock onto that weapon and it will disallow me from drawing that weapon. But when I go to draw, there's a small little lever right there. And when I put any pressure on that, that's going to depress that tab that's locked into the ejection port and allow me to draw that weapon smoothly. It is a very slick system and it is gaining a lot of in popularity because of its ease of use. Here's another version of the ALS and again, as soon as you come down and depress it, it's a very smooth draw. Until I depress that though, that weapon is stuck in there. It's not gonna go anywhere. So we have the Safari Land ALS automatic locking system. What's nice about it is when I reholster my weapon, I don't have to worry about flipping a hood back up. As soon as I reholster, I can forget about it, bring my weapon back up, get my primary going, all that, kind of, all that good stuff. So the ALS system, for good reason, is a great system out there. Now, if you notice on this particular holster that I have right here, which is the Safari Land 7304, it has a little thumb guard right here. Now, the purpose of that is to ensure that should somebody try to disengage all these locking mechanism, mechanisms, if they are, they are familiar with them, they're going to have to either come over or under and try to get into that at a very awkward angle. And if you have any knowledge of hand-to-hand -hand combat or anything like that, you're going to jack up their thumb pretty good. So that little thumb guard right there is a good idea if you think you might be going hands-on with somebody. So I'd recommend that for all my guys who are putting themselves in the harm's way with an ALS or an SLS system. Now on this particular holster, you'll notice that it's a combined system. It has a SLS and an ALS. So when you draw from this, you simply depress the SLS, rotate it forward. Once you rotate it forward, your thumb naturally falls on that ALS and you can draw the weapon. Now what's cool about this is you can have the SLS down and not in the up position. You can use this like an ALS holster, but should you be going into a situation where you think I might need that extra bit of security, you can rotate that up to give yourself that extra bit of security. Now, one question I've been getting a lot, guys, is about the Serpa holster. So how the Serpa holster works is very similar to the ALS. What it does is it's a small tab right over the trigger guard and it locks in right around that area. I'm not very familiar, as familiar with it because I don't use it for the following reason and that because you have to put pressure right along where the trigger guard is as you draw it, a lot of people have a tendency to, for their fingers to get into the trigger guard because they're putting that pressure, especially when they're under stress. And by stress, I'm just talking about just getting timed or some type of scenario, not even in real life. Now there have been instances of people drawing that weapon just being timed and they 
discharge that weapon into their leg. In fact, there was a very famous YouTuber who did that. So it's for that reason and a couple others that I don't typically recommend the surface system. It can get, the mechanism can get clogged and jam and no longer allow you to really release your weapon. You have to press, you have to put pressure right over the trigger as you're drawing. So I don't think it's a very um, good design where they put that. And it's for that reason that I never recommend the surface system. Although I'm sure there are many people who have used it to really good effect. Just for me personally, I don't think it's the best option. So guys, we've talked about a lot of different holsters up to this point. I hope you've learned something. No matter what, pick a holster that works for you depending on your situation and what you do. I would recommend some type of retention system, whether that be the self-locking system, the G-Code Power Assisted, or ALS. So, no matter what though, what really matters is that you have some type of Han Solo type vibe, some type of cool vibe. So, if you don't look cool, literally nothing else matters.